All right, guys, we're back. I'm your boy DeAnthony. I'm my boy Adon. And so, my boy C Jack over here. Well, you got it right, ladies and gentlemen. I did get it right. It took me a while. <laughs> so, thank you guys for watching. If you like this material that you're watching, that you're getting, that you've been blessed to view with your eyes, <laughs> go ahead and hit that notification bar or notification button. And uh, you'll be able to see everything that we do because we're so awesome. We're better than everyone that you watch. It's pretty sweet. We Everybody. Got, we got a lot of content. So just sit back, relax, and roll with us on this. We're going to have some conversation, all right? Yeah, so, sorry. I don't know what that has to do with nothing. I, I just felt like saying it. Let me say what I want to say. Okay. <laughs> we got five on it. Uh, so we did you guys another favor. Ooh. Another favor. Fair. And went to go see Atomic Blonde. Now, I know everyone had it. You guys are all hyped up. It was a female. She's kicking ass. Look at the trailer. Ooh. <laughs> I like the sampling with the 80s music and Kanye. I hope that's in the movie. Psych. Man. What is going on with these movies? We've been bamboozled yet again. <laughs> so, she's uh, still kicked ass. It's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, she was good. We got, how you want me to say it? You have to say it. Go ahead. Who's in it? Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron and, and, and James and McAvoy. <laughs> we got Charlize John Goodman. We got Charlize Theron and James McAvoy. Right. <laughs> um, I guess we get a, a shout out to John Goodman. You know, this is directed by the same guy who directed uh, and wrote the. Um, John Wick. John Wick that we love so John much. John Wick? Yeah, John Wick 1 and 2. <laughs> that we love so much. Um, but I feel like it just didn't live up to John Wick. So I'm going right. to just go real quick. We can just jump in what I thought about the actual movie. Um, I thought that the story was very bland. It was kind of confusing. Uh, it was very choppy. Um, I thought that the cinematography was great, though. He got that on point. The fight scenes are great. Um, I thought that the um, choreography was, was was on point. How they have this one shot. It's, it lasted about 10 minutes. Yeah. One right. shot. It, it kind of reminded me of the uh, Daredevil scene. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I felt like it was... I was it, thinking that too. It outdid <laughs> that. Uh, but then really, the, the rest of the movie, I didn't really like it. I didn't get any hero to villain complex. I didn't get any intellectual value. And and rewatch value is to me zero, um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and give it. I'm gonna give it a two point five because I don't want to be too harsh because there was some things that just were kind of like dope, mm -hmm. but as far as everything building up to those parts, I wasn't really feeling. So can you, you guys agree, disagree? I don't know, but I agree with that. Like a lot of things that you said, um, as far as like the pros for this movie, they did really good with the cinematography, the long action shots. I like the. Um, uh, fighting uh, and even like the bullet sounds the impact of those very good uh, you can tell that they really put a lot into that um, but the story was really lackluster so when you talk about the cons you know I just was not interested after you know I found myself actually dozing off like here and there because the story was kind of hard to follow when they were kind of talking about the timeline of certain events happening so for me, rewatch value, again, zero, and I'm not interested in rewatching it, so I'm going to give it a two out of five stars. Ooh. Solid two. It's going to be a hard two. It's going to be a hard pass if I need to watch it again. Um, yeah. So See, Jack? <laughs> in the house! What we got? See, Jack? Um, Shelly Theron did a fantastic job. Like, um, I really, really loved her character. I actually really loved her character. Um, she... she kicked ass and she mm -hmm. did it with like and the cool thing was it, it just it felt very believable because there were moments where like you got that you know she's going at it and she's actually tired but she's also wearing down these yeah. big dudes and i'm just like i love that it really made me feel like like this was actually her doing it yeah. um cinematography wise obviously very good soundtrack fantastic um visuals were all right hero to villain complex was missing um and they try to do this tarantino twist thing I uh, probably should stick to the straightforward movies. Um, yeah, yeah I did. <sighs> Damn, it's hard because I like Charlize Theron. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it uh, a three. That's a mercy three. Um, just because I really appreciate Charlize Theron in this movie um, and the action sequences. 
Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm gonna quote it as. Yeah, she did carry the movie. You can I, tell she did she, 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 the movie. she did a really yeah. good job. You can tell that she put forth the effort in like that combat. Yeah, I, I appreciate when they make these characters where they're just not like unbeatable, you know. But um, she she kept like the damage throughout the movie, which is kind of like what we saw in John Wick. Yeah, yeah what I liked about it was uh, it wasn't unrealistic. It wasn't a kill bill. Right. To where she just has unlimited stamina <laughs> and she's kicking everyone's ass. Right, right, right. She's breathing hard. Yeah. She's sighing. She's making, oh, you know, she's making these noises. She she is out of breath. Yeah. And she's doing, she's 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 hitting us in our weak spots as far as men are concerned. Oh, yeah. She's fighting right, right. men. Yeah. So she's hitting us in our weak spots, our knees, our elbows, you know, places that we're not expected to be yeah. hit. Mm-hmm. And that has given her the the advantage, so it made it so much more believable. Definitely, yeah. Which I did I did appreciate that for mm-hmm. sure. Um, so I guess let's just get in get into it. Uh, you said that you like the score. Yes, I love the score. The, the score was let's try to say something positive about it. Uh, <laughs> it, it was just like the the music score had a lot of old school, like David Bowie, and just I mean. I, I, I grew up with all like that music like I, I I really thoroughly enjoy it so I mean it it was fun and it went along with the uh, the color scheme of the movie they had a lot of the the vibrant lights and stuff and that's mm-hmm. that's where that movie that that music belongs so it fit it, he did a really good job and I actually think that's a trend in movies now I feel like not too long ago it, maybe even with Guardians of the Galaxy like m- music really contributed to what was going on in the movie. Mm-hmm. And so, like, like even for Thor Ragnarok, if you watch the trailer, they play Valhalla from Led Zeppelin. They ah. talk about the yeah, they talk about come from the land of the ice and the snow. And Immigrant that, song. Yeah, it, it, yeah. So, um, but um, yeah, that actually entails with um the the story a lot. So I mean, I don't know. I just and even Baby Driver, same Baby thing. Driver you know, so a lot good. of the music is starting to really be incorporated into the movie and thought process. So. I saw that in here, and I haven't seen that in any past directorial debuts for this director. You know, for, so for me, I, I do get you, but I felt like it was a distraction for mm-hmm. me trying to follow the story. It was so hard to follow the story that a lot of time the music and how the the scene was shot with the music, because it is a part of the the film. Mm-hmm. It is its own character. Yeah. It's distracting for me trying to figure out what <laughs> what is happening. You know what? Yeah. I, I kind of got that vibe too. I felt that like. They're, they're giving us this, like, complicated, maybe overly complicated spy movie that they themselves didn't write very well. And they just threw in this uh, 80s soundtrack just to kind of get you distracted with, you know, what right. they were, like, lacking almost. Yeah, I, I would say that. I mean, it was cool. It, it did... I, I do believe that soundtracks are important. I love the music. The 80s yeah. music was dope. But yeah, it just it was, was a distraction, I felt like. It, sure. the, the story wasn't hard and it wasn't solid enough for me to like really enjoy the music and like be on like autopilot with the the right. story but yeah I was, I was understanding the story it just the story was not too ambitious like john wick was right john wick was it was a very ambitious very different way to go about you know assassin movies mm-hmm. this turned into a spy movie but it it missed that 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 Umph, you know that. Yeah, I, I felt mm-hmm. like if they did go the route of John Wick and it was an assassin movie with this kind of music, it would have been a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think that, you know, again, what they showed us in the trailer and what she was doing with the music as it was going along, it was just very on point. You know, they were, you know, substituting the gunshots or the impacts with mm-hmm. the beats of the music. And it, it was just so cool. So we did ask some other people in the theater because I'm like, am I being too harsh about this movie right now? Because I was excited about it. And mm-hmm. I do tend to be a little more critical mm-hmm. um, than my other two colleagues here. Yeah. So I was like, man, let me just ask someone else. And the guy said he was falling asleep. Yeah. Yeah. The, the lady said she couldn't really follow the story too well. She said maybe if I read the book. I'm like, oh, well, if you gotta read the book, right? Then it's not a good, it's not a good movie because yeah. they didn't portray the story that they should have. Tell me a story. This right. is what you're doing in a movie. What's the moral of the story? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, there's absolutely no moral. I feel like it's just wild, wild west over there. Yeah, I think that was it too. Is yeah. like there wasn't necessarily there wasn't like a point where that made us feel like it was vital. Maybe that was it. It's like because because John Wick, we're like hanging on a moment. There's something that happens that we're, we're like, oh my god, this is going down. And this movie just didn't kind of have that. Like it just yeah. I, I didn't really feel anything. I think it's because maybe for Shirley Theron, maybe that's the flaw in the character. We we didn't understand what she was wanting or why she was there until the end of the movie, so it's like even in the midst of all of that, 
Yeah. We're holding on to this one thing that's kind of irrelevant. Like, yeah. Yeah, to me, it wasn't a twist because the story is already in swirls as it is. Yeah. And to me, it was just one little, one last swirl that they that they did at the end. Right. And it just made it, it made everything kind of like. It's like, hey, I guess, why not? You know, <laughs> just go with it, you know? Yeah, it made it kind of irrelevant. It, it needed to be a, a kind of a straightforward, like I needed to get an idea of who she was. Yeah. And then flip it on me. I didn't really know. And I was just kind of over it at that point, too. Right, exactly. I was like, it feels like this movie's pretty much winding down and it's done. All right. And then, he, oh, wait, 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 but there's a twist, plot twist. And then it's over. And then I'm just like, okay, so now I can go. Now I can go. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, if you compared it to uh, Tarantino, it was definitely well, not. That's what I'm that. saying. They it tried. Like, they tried. <laughs> they, it wasn't successful You hurt them by comparing it to him. Well, no, yeah. I'm saying that's what they, because yeah. that's, what, that's, a, well, that's a whole thing. Is like, as a director, you're inspired by doing that. You know, you want to kind of do something cool. So it seemed like this director tried a lot of new things because in the John Wick movies, he didn't do any of this. Right, right. And so if this was an experiment movie, I'm sorry, bro, this is the wrong one to do it on, especially when you had such a, a great actress portraying such a great character. Yeah. And then you, you have this lackluster story that dropped the ball. And it sucks because I would have really liked to see this go somewhere more with Charlie Theron because she did a fantastic job. Right. If but... they would have had that, the, the villain they had at the very end, if he was in it more... Then maybe yeah. it'd have been more of an interesting story to how you know they're kind of combating each other, and then all of a sudden, bam, it's a twist. Yes, yeah, yeah. now that you bring that, it didn't hit me till now, but it's like we see that guy do some pretty vindictive stuff, like just off the gate when you first meet him, and then you don't see him again. Yeah, you see I him mean, like once or twice, and I'm just like, if you guys ever do watch the movie, you'll kind of know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. We're just having like a yeah, we're just candid going conversation. Right now. Right. But I yeah. mean, that's that's what it is. You know, we're trying to come up with an excuse of how this movie went wrong. And, I mean, what they could have done, you know? It's just they could have just had a better writing in it, a better story overall. Yeah, they need, they need some better storytellers because it felt like she was just given every little detail of what happened. I'm right. like, I don't care about this part. We could have skipped this part. Yeah. This is not necessary. So it was like a bad storyteller. Right. You, know, you ever had someone at work telling you a story? You'd be like, golly, please hurry up with what yeah. is the point here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, wrap it up. Where's the forward? <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to think, too, like, in the, like, I'm just thinking, like, how to make, how it would have been fun to have a better dynamic in the, in the movie. But, like, yeah. that, that scene where they're sitting down talking to her, I feel like they all had the same tonal value. None of them were different. None of them were angsty. You had the guy behind the glass sitting there just being silent, strong silent type. She was being strong silent type. He was being questionable silent type. And then this guy just wasn't saying shit. John, John Goodman wasn't. Like, he said some things, but it's like, you know, the, the dynamic was bad. So maybe just more of that dynamic yeah. of having more intriguing characters that actually right. tell the story would have been better. Um, and and that I think that would probably have been maybe something to help out the story. So as yeah. a period piece, I'm gonna just say my my, my piece <laughs> yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about Berlin. I know of the wall. I know that you know. I guess on one side of the wall, they couldn't like listen to music. They had to like um, be. They couldn't like wear jeans. They had to. Uh, they were really strict. Yeah. But as far as, like, the culture, I don't know what it was like. So I don't even really know if it's a real period piece. I don't know if there's some things that shouldn't be there. I just felt like the story, as far, at least for me, I won't talk about all Americans, but for me, I don't really know how accurate it was. So it wasn't like, oh, snap, they were doing that. Oh, yeah, they did put that in there. Like, even some of, like, the microphones, I was like, I think that's a little too small for back then. I, but I don't really know what they had over there. So yeah. I can't really say... Um, did you guys feel like it was a period piece? Did you feel like you were in 1980? Uh, again, I, I think that what they were just trying to accomplish is giving us like a, a, a newer spy movie with um, a different, you know, atmosphere with the, it being in the 80s and with 80s music, you know. Um, you know, let's, let's get a woman, a strong woman lead. Mm -hmm. And let's put it in this kind of period piece and hope that it works. And it, it just didn't work. It didn't work. It was more of a distraction, you know, than anything. And it, the story is the backbone. I shouldn't have to try to figure yeah. out or try to keep, try to pay attention to it too much. You know, just tell me what it is that and, and what everything you else. This is a filler. This is actually like as a period piece. It didn't. I mean. It suited it for the most part. I mean, they, they didn't show a lot. It wasn't a lot. You were in Berlin. Yeah. The structure looked like Berlin. They had the wall. 
and then you had kind of the whole like punk rock stuff going on there and that, that's kind of all you really got you didn't really get a period piece to be honest with you and then the neon lights maybe that added to it but i think that added more towards the cinematography than anything yeah i didn't care um, for it really um, i liked it because it just um it matched the music and it matched shirley Ther theron and, and some characteristics but it's like again this is a movie that you have to pay attention to because literally like slightest words mean something towards the end of the movie like literally smallest words there are certain things that james mcavoy says and you have to remember them to go back to the end of the movie go go to the end of the movie and then piece it together and then be like oh and even I things that she that. says but it's not that, impactful enough no that's what i'm saying they lost it in the midst there like it's just <clears> like <throat> it was so fragmented that it didn't it's like you got the story that did this not the story that did this and then like Boom! Like holy shit, that right. just happened. You got a story like, that did this. Yeah, and like, it's like I, going back and forth. I, I want to know. know. Like at the end, I'm like, because I'm I'm having the assumption to what you know, one of the they have this character called the Satchel they're looking for, and like I I'm, I'm like I want to know who this is, and I had an idea who it was to the end of the movie, and when I found out what it was, I was like, I was like, oh, okay, nice twist, but I don't feel like I earned anything out of it. What so, do you guys think about James McAvoy? I like James yeah, McAvoy yeah. as an actor. I think he was pretty cool. Like. In, in this role um you know he's just an overall solid actor honestly yeah. like him Charlize Theron they they had a really good dynamic but I just think that this story was just it wasn't there it wasn't mm -hmm. there for them and I feel that like for it to be a spy movie um there there should have just been like more intensity more um like I don't know like loops involved you know so did he seem to be important to the story to you I kind of felt like he wasn't, because he was all over the place. He was, I think that's because and, he was labeled from the beginning. Like you knew, you know what was gonna, you knew what was gonna happen. I already knew what was gonna happen to him at the end. Like I, I already know. Yeah. And I think I knew that from kind the of moment predictable. I met him, met yeah. him, and that's 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 what kind of bothered me about it was like I know he's gonna die at the end. Like that's gonna happen. All right, but like he was her point of contact. He doesn't show up. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm, I mean, I just don't understand the direction that they. If if he's the point of contact, you right. you drop down in Berlin, you get in some car with some random guys, right? And he's telling you, like telling, he's right behind them. I just didn't understand like what the direction was. Just to show us some action, just to show it. Yeah, I would have liked them to be telling them and maybe like hit them, hit their car, and then they had a fight. Yeah, just to get in a car with random people when they told you who your contact was supposed to be. And he's telling you, I, I didn't get it. It just didn't. The, the, the whole movie sense. is just basically things that already took place, and then she's just telling it. Yeah. And so they constantly give us like a, a glimpse of what she told, right? That part of the story, and then we're back to the present time, and then they're just kind of interviewing her, and then again she goes back and tells the next part of the story, and then they interview her some more, and so it's just like constantly these interruptions, and it was just. It, it, that for me took away from. What I think was that going part on. could have been good if they just would have if the story she was telling was interesting. Yeah, that's the only thing. I if it was interesting and there were some key moments that made you say like, "Damn," mm -hmm. then or why is he saying that? Like things that kind of stuck out. Yeah, then it would have been more. You know, it it it, it had done its job more. All right, so the consensus is. Fight scenes and cinematography. Right. Everything else is very lacking. And Shirley unfortunately. I think fight, fight scenes were great. I think if, mm -hmm. you know, you're ever on YouTube and they have, like, best clips from uh, Atomic Blonde, you should probably watch it. Because yeah. it's going to be some dope fight scenes. The To me, this is... Now, they, they got this right as far as, like, the practical effects. Was Choreography, great. practical like effects. Stabbing and stuff like oh, that. yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, but it just wasn't enough. There wasn't that many of those moments to uh, keep me interested. Right. Yeah. You know, just uh, just because I'm an enthusiast on this, I like to figure out like how the movie could have been better. Now, let me just ask you guys. Sorry, I know you wanted to wrap this up, but let's say they the, the beginning of the movie they told her, "Look, you got to go in and clean house. Everyone you meet needs to die eventually, but you just have to get this." And you have to get this because if anyone else has this, then you're every, everything's gone. Everyone's gonna go to hell. I mean, that's like the what they did in John Wick, you know. And like the kill count would have went way higher too. She would just been like on a, a secret mission, just like you know, dead or alive. Here's your license to kill, and it would have been yeah, more John Wick, James Bond esque, mm -hmm. you know.
So yeah, I don't know if it would have been better. And it's I, hard to imagine. I, to me, I, I don't think like that would have helped quickened it. the pace. I, just the uncertain things would have quickened the pace. But I, I don't think it would have helped. I think it would have just been like John Wick, but you're a spy instead of an assassin. Go. And then, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you guys let us know what you thought about the movie if you saw it. I would not recommend it. There's no rewatch value for me. No I would say if you're going to go watch it, because the theater was packed. Everyone's expecting to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> I would say go on a Tuesday. Or whatever day or Sunday that's going to be cheaper for you. Five dollar. <laughs> because other than that, it's going to be, to me, a waste of your time. Yeah. And money. So, I don't know. They just can't make movies. This year, last year, I felt like we had a lot of good movies back to back. Yeah. This year, it's just not doing it for me. I don't know what's going on. It's not. It's really not doing it, unfortunately. I think you're getting hit or miss. Uh, hopefully, we have like we're we're halfway into the year. This is hopefully the second wind, and hopefully, it picks up. I feel like it's not. This is the blockbuster, <laughs> this is the blockbuster season. So they put all their all their best eggs in this basket. Don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta hope for the best. It's gotta be. It has to get hopefully, better. That movie's until November. We'll have a climactic ending with Star Wars at the end of the year. So, so next week we'll be watching uh, Detroit and Dark Tower. Yes, yeah. looking forward to Dark Tower. So look for that. So we got another period piece, and then we got another action adventure based upon a comic graphic novel. Yep. So check us out, guys. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Check out our other stuff on our page. There's probably some links down here somewhere right about now, and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we're out, baby. I'm your boy, DeAnthony. I'm uh, on. I see Jack. And we're out, baby. Later, guys. Peace. Peace. Jean. James. 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 James the Mechelon. James. Charles Atheron. <laughs> Can we go now? Yeah. We go now. Okay. Three, three, two, one, go. Breakroom Ablitz. Oh, is this oh, live? Oh, yeah, sorry. This is live.